Welcome, everybody, to Lore and Poor. We have got an amazing episode for you tonight because we have got the absolute leading expert on Strixhaven. You may or may not have heard of Strixhaven. Guess what? I didn't really know anything about Strixhaven before uh, our patrons voted for this topic by a landslide, so I had to learn about it very quickly before I had our amazing guest, RuneSmith, Logan, RuneSmith, Logan, RuneSmith. Either or, it depends on the context, but I am here nonetheless. I may be, I, as the night goes on and more drinks are poured, I may kind of flip and flop back and that's forth, but that's right. okay. Um, so, uh, so yeah, first off, what we usually do on Lauren Poor is start the night off by just talking about what, what we drink it tonight, uh, Logan. I am, uh, sinfully wading through, uh, the remains of my 99 bananas. It's a really weird liquor with a 50% ABV that I'm, you know, mixing in with, um, Nanya. And an inter- an interesting little thing I learned. Do you know the, uh, Laffy Taffy banana flavor? Yeah, I was. You know, bananas don't taste like that, right? Not at all. I found out it's not artificial banana. It's actually an extinct species of banana that was destroyed entirely from one type of mold. So we used to have bananas that tasted like that. Oh my God. We're missing out. We're not even into the topic of discussion yet. And I'm, my mind's already blown for two reasons. A, that, that fact alone was amazing. And B, no joke within the last two days i saw mention of i i want to say off the top of my head uh jeremy from a couple of the shows on our network mentioned on either twitter and discord or something about hey i wish bananas actually tasted like the laffy taffy banana flavor and it's so wild that you brought that up within like probably 30 hours of that of that mention well now we know why Wow, uh, that is wild. Okay, uh, and then of course I am back on Dirty Deuce tonight. So uh, Logan, if you don't know, that is Kettle One Vodka and Diet Mountain Dew. Oh, um, it's it's kind of my go to drink. Uh, my oldest brother calls it the Freshman. Oh no, that's fair. It's just vodka. the 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 diet is what gets me. That's funny. Yeah, I. You know what? I tried it. Like if I went back to drinking regular Mountain Dew now, I mean, that thing just burns my soul. Oh, like, that it's is fair. so pungent now uh, after going back. I mean, soda companies. Yeah, they, they constantly change up the formulas and the recipes in the background. So you can never tell what it's going to taste like if you stop for a little while. Yeah, so like as a kid, drank just you know twelve packs, twenty four packs a weekend of of Mountain Dew, and then. uh getting a little bit older, trying to be a little bit more carb conscientious, switching the diet. And then now if I go back, it's just like, oh, my God, it it feels like poison. Mm -hmm. It is. Uh, And and yeah, so genuinely one of the most excited I've ever been for a topic on Lauren Poor. So much so that I'm actually standing up. I don't know if I don't know if the listeners at home can hear, but I've got standing energy tonight because I, I I'm at my standing desk. I I didn't want to be sitting on my butt for this one because a I knew next to nothing about Strixhaven before uh, 12 hours ago, and b after learning about Strixhaven, it's actually a pretty cool topic. So I'm so excited to have the like number one leading expert on Strixhaven here with us tonight. Yeah. So. Before we kind of get into the Q and A portion of the show, Runesmith, uh, would you mind kind of just like walking our audience through what even is Strixhaven? Yeah, so I'll um, bounce a little bit back and forth between the uh, you know real world history and the history of you know the actual setting. Um, originally, back in 2019, um, I went to. Uh, what was it? Pax Unplugged. It was the first convention that I went to. And I brought a full script of my first manuscript of a book. And I had it in a little side bag. You know, I was running through the hallways frantically. And I met with someone who, um, specifically their job was at Wizards of the Coast. They would essentially uh, backtrack and look at all the historical lore and make sure that the new content that they're working on, you know, fits with all the old lore, like the Feywild and stuff like that. And I had just written a book on the Feywild that was 100% like you know, by the book for what they had written. 
So uh, while we were talking about it over drinks, they snagged my grab bag. They took it all the way back to Wizards of the Coast, and the first thing they did with it was make a Magic the Gathering setting. Did you actually know that it was originally a Magic the Gathering setting back in 2019 before it became a, you know, a 5e work? I've heard rumors, but I didn't know what to believe at this point. Yeah, that is actually uh, the gospel true. Uh, it originally, uh, interestingly enough, uh, a lot of this one specifically, the, the few things that I had tied, obviously, uh, most of it, they decided not to backtrack with the lore. They just took it and essentially said that, oh, this world is created uh, unique. It's not a part of any of the other worlds, so they didn't have to overlap with a lot of extra work. That's a lot of paid hours that, you know, nobody wants to nobody wants to pay for. And with the mana colors, they had essentially five different types of decks, and these uh, five types of decks evolved into the five schools that they have. The first of them is the lore hold. They essentially want to figure out everything. They're very boring. They are, I think, uh, white and red, so they just kind of charge and deny everything and everyone around them. Those are the only ones I actually noted colors for because this is all plagiaristic work, so I'm not going to pay too much attention to it. (laughs) The second are the Prism Kids. They are essentially like the drama club if they were elementals. You have the Quantum Club, which um, it's like dimensional math. It's like all the mathematician people kind of figured out Dimensions work in fractals, so um, that's kind of how they work. Then you have the Silver Quill, which is just a bunch of angsty bards. I believe they work with uh, pen and paper, not so much with music, because they're very soft-spoken. Then you have the Wither Blooms, which are really the only ones that actually matter, because they plant <laughs> trees and stuff. They're like animals, and that's, you know, the only good guild. Not guild. School. Yeah, I've heard them, I've heard them referred to as schools, houses, colleges, which... Colleges kind of sounded weird to me because it seems like this is one college, right? It's it's probably a juxtaposition of bard colleges, which is a weird way to have that put. Like, if you were a bard and you went to a school, you wouldn't go to a college based on the college that you have, like the College of Lore. That seems really... You mean like your major? Yeah, that's like really bad resource locating. Because like if you go to one college in one hometown, you know, for five miles, people can only become that bard. It's just bad teaching. Right, yeah, you gotta. It'd be like if you had a college dedicated, like, just to uh, fine arts, or a college just for uh, commun- uh, computer science. Like, colleges have like yeah, different exactly. majors and stuff. And I, I think this setting does a good job of it. You know, it is obviously a blatant rip off of Harry Potter. I actually wrote it with Harry Styles. Yeah, yeah. Oh wait, you oh you wrote this with Harry Styles, the, the singer from One Direction. Not the singer for the oh, whole. People are gonna be mad that you said that. No, he he, oh, no. he is the author of uh, Umbrella Academy. Oh, a different Harry Styles that I didn't know about. Oh, she. Mm-hmm. I'll I'll edit later. that out in post so I don't get you know. Man, I'm pitched. I'm gaslighting you further. He actually is uh, the the lead singer of I believe My Chemical Romance, but he did also write. Umbrella Academy, which is now a Netflix special. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, okay. I did. I do remember that weird fact. Bouncing that, all over the board uh, here. Yeah, that the uh, the lead singer from My Chemical Romance did write or t- took part in writing uh, the Umbrella Academy comics or books, graphic novels, whatever. Just just while researching this, I did get some pretty heavy uh, Harry Potter vibes from it. So that might be uh, th- there may be some bleed over here or there. Yeah, no, that that actually is one of the major disappointments. If I'm being honest about the work, a lot of it is very much. Oh, we had the whole team sit down, watch Harry Potter and take bullet points. And now we're just going to make a bunch of different pieces of content based on the bullet points. Like, obviously, they have crazy magic sports in a big open field that they have, you know, a, a backing shot that I'm sure was referenced to the intro shot of the, the, the Harry Potter game. And then, you know, a lot of the actual the mechanics and the school functionality are based on peer pressure. So it's like a mix of like high school musical and Harry Potter. I feel like that's really what this book is trying to be. And then they threw owl people in there to make us happy. You mentioned the uh, the different colleges of magic. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. Did we? Called. How many are there? Were there five? Four, five, five of them. Five of them. Okay. And I think it's based on Magic: The Gathering principles. I don't know the exact specifics. Okay, and uh, like who? 
do they each have their own like leader or founder or like where do these colleges like come from? Yeah, I mean, naturally you have one person reigning over each course and they're the ones that kind of immortally teach whatever uh, whatever basics they're going through. They're kind of the embodiments of these schools of magic. You know, for Witherbloom, it's a big tree. For uh, Silver Quill, it's uh, Severus Snape and so on and so forth. <laughs> I think that name sounds really familiar to me. You know, I'm I'm not sure. I, I I couldn't I couldn't pin that down for you. TM TM TM. Yeah. So, I did while researching this, I came across something called a bib biblioplex. Bibliplex. The biblioplex. This is essentially what you could call the laziest uh, call to lore in a setting or in context to a book. All that it, it functions to be is, uh, you know, Avatar The Last Airbender, the first three seasons? I loved it. The library of everything that is taken from everywhere. So, yeah, it's kind of like that. And then uh, there is a DC comic in the Vertigo series called Sandman. And he essentially lives in a realm where all the writings that would be but never were are in a library. So this feels kind of like a combination of both of those, and its main narrative purpose is, oh, everything is here that you would ever need to know. This is the college. That's it. Like, that's how you make any source of education, is just putting it all in books. Which, you know, some people have fair criticisms on. Um, namely me, I'm the only person, but... Yeah, it's not, it sounds not too dissimilar to the King Killer Chronicles. I don't know if you ever read those books, I'm but there's familiar. like a like, yeah, there's like a, a main a library that's supposed to have every book in existence in it. And I feel like that's maybe like a pretty, you know, easy to lean on uh, trope, I guess you would say. But uh, I mean, yeah. if it's in Strixhaven, like. How bad are those late fees, though? Like, if you check something out, you know, you, like, either kick the bucket or just forget you checked out that wicked magic evil spell. I'm not entirely sure if it works in a temporal kind of transcending time function, but I would imagine if you check out the book and you forget to return it, the book is immediately forgotten and it is immediately re-recorded into the annals of the library. I mean, that would check out, and that would be a pretty good, like, narrative uh, kind of mechanism you could use to yeah. just, you know, use for what any any kind of system that... It really... That way you could... Yeah, it makes it time-proof, because if you have someone who goes off with a book or steals it for a long time, you know, if the college is to persist forever, then eventually you'll find the book again. No no, no knowledge is forgotten. It just goes away for a little bit. Yeah, I, I do recall now that this is... A library that has all the knowledge of the school. So obviously, if somebody took a book out, it would have to somehow get back to the college one way or another, late fee or not. I would imagine so. Yeah, I don't know how late fee fees are handled. That's not really my department. <laughs> uh, I don't know if this is going to be your department either, but I think that you probably have at least heard rumors or or, or something about it being a school. Obviously, people you know seniors or whatever or probably have pulled some pranks have there been like any like the biggest or best pranks of 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 strict saving that any of the uh you know upper level uh students have pulled that kind of really got like headlines that is a fantastic question actually uh just these these past two weeks there was a massive you know headline that went all over the school board and it was titled tasty lick and the problem with it is that it was actually pulled from a different dimension where people were encouraged to steal things and people read that and they thought oh okay let's do that irl so they started stealing pretty much they swept out the whole bathrooms you know a couple of students actually found a secret hallway in one of the bathrooms that was covered by what they were trying to steal and, you know, that that is just lawsuit on top of lawsuit. And then you can't find the students. You can't find the stolen property. So it was just it was it was a debacle, to say the least. I think that was pulled from our timeline. I I vaguely recall that being a TikTok. Have you have you been on TikTok, Logan? I am somewhat familiar with TikTok. There was a TikTok thing that went around a few months ago where people were just stealing shit, like fucking hair, hand dryers out of the bathroom and stuff. That's ridiculous. I you wonder know, if... 
I would think so, but you know, there's an immediate problem there because I don't think any of the bathrooms in Strixhaven have like hand dryers, so it, Why it would might they need them, right? Exactly. So it might have been, you know, a different parallel universe that doesn't have hand dryers. You know, that has like Strixhaven style bathrooms, and they pulled from that. It's a, it's a weird, wacky world we live in when you have infinite <laughs> annals of history. <laughs> Really, yeah, really. I mean, anything like they could have, they could have, you know, somebody could have made a magical conjuring spell that could have conjured TikTok into the world. It's all like oh, one or two talks, that, as I call them. That would be a nightmare. Uh, people doing the tastiest lick. Mm. I feel like that. And, uh, that is just spelling an apocalypse right there. Yeah, I, I, I swear, if if anybody in D and D land in Faerun or uh, where where is Strixhaven? What plane of existence is that in? Oh, uh, it doesn't matter because uh, the best way to make something accessible is to say that it can take place in any campaign or any setting. There you so go. It's if everywhere. In it's- any D and D land. If any of them got a hold of a cell phone and got a TikTok, Uh-oh. that'd be the. <laughs> be the unit of the multiverse it would be a very big uh, problem or at least for that iteration of Strixhaven, that would just be terrible everyone has cell phones yeah it really it would be really bad we mentioned that the the other uh the the five schools and college c- colleges or houses however you want to put them what uh which one do you think you personally logan would most like to attend oh definitely witherbloom because uh, it's the only one that matters. That's actually their headline. Uh, you know, all the other ones have really intricate, kind of really sweet, you know, heartfelt things that come from the creators. This one is just, we're the best, and it's correct, so that's the one I would join. <laughs> it's like, it. Uh, okay, if we were to match Witherbloom up to a, uh, you know, that other magical school uh, houses oh, system. Oh, shoot. I'm not even sure. Which you one do you that. think? Uh, yeah, I don't even know if it would be really. I mean, it wouldn't uh, be a one to one match, right? Because no, there's five, yeah, it's, four. It's, is it four? There's four of the other one. It, which one am I, I forgetting? Don't... Ravenclaw. Which they're just the intellectually the nerds. Yeah, they're the math guys. So, to the best of my understanding, you go into Gryffindor if you are brave or bullheaded. You go into. Um, Ravenclaw, if you have a high, like, left brain IQ, if you understand numbers very well, which I don't, uh, you go into, shoot, what's the snake one? Slytherin. Slytherin. Um, you go there if, you know, you have sweaty palms a lot, if you suffer from, you know, like rough, leathery skin. And then you go to Hufflepuff if you don't fit into any of the others. Yeah. If you're just a good, a good, a good dude or, I think you're just a wild card if you're in Hufflepuff. Like you could do it. You could be a serial killer. You just don't quite fit into Slytherin. You're just, oh, that's a, that's a Hufflepuff. So, you know, I, I think I'd probably, probably end up in Slytherin, which would put me closer to, let's say, the Silver Quills. Yeah. That, yeah, that checks out. I kind of like the, uh, the Quandrix of, um. Oh, the Quantum Club. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think you'd probably pair them up with the Ravenclaw. They're kind of the nerds of Strixhaven, it seems like. Yeah, absolutely. No, they they, they use math to cast magic. So, you know, who, yeah. who wants, who needs them? Straight nerds, but Cutting I just feel forms. like my my whole skill set and stuff probably would match up <laughs> with that one the most, which is unfortunate. Fair enough. Uh, is there any... Um, what kind of subjects are there... I know we've talked about these five different uh, cl- colleges, which end up being like, you know, pretty different. There's like a like a like a plant based, you know, nature one. There's the math one. Yeah. Uh, there's like the, uh, the 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 like elemental um, like show off one is the best I could say it. Are there like core subjects that all these different colleges? Teach? No, it's entirely on the whimsy of each of the teachers during that day. So it could not even relate to the subject that you're trying trying to attend. It's just a matter of uh, the whimsy of that teacher. So, you know, with the, with the, the quantum classes, you're going to get more by the book, you know, curriculum. And then if you go to, say, lore hold, the, the teacher essentially just puts every single book in front of you and says, figure it out. Um, so that one, you know, that one really brings home with me. That's very familiar. Then you have the... Uh, 
you know, the silver quill, which is a lot more about personal expression. So the teacher's not even there. Everyone just, you know, acts <laughs> like the teacher and they all start writing down poems and they tell each other that, you know, my poem's better than yours, but in reality, they're all pretty terrible. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 there's a lot of variance, I think. Yeah, so it sounds like it doesn't even have a, uh, like a class you sign up for, but a teacher or lack of a teacher that you sign up for. Yeah, well, I'm not really sure how the signing up process goes. I don't know how the students show up, if they're conjured, if they're pulled from like, you know, cribs at night and then raised in cryo chambers and then brought to the school when they're of age. Uh, I definitely wouldn't know anything about that, but I think uh, you would get assigned once you once you fall in line. That's a that's a amazing point you raised because uh, that's a question I didn't even realize I had about like the admission process. It sounds like there is no uh, admission admission process or uh, a very lax admission process process where people just kind of either wander in or somehow are conjured in well, and then all, hey, all i can now. all i can say and all i can promise is that our students are definitely 100 percent under all legal matter not synthesized and uh the few that um well they, there are some students that pay their way in uh, unrelated to that previous statement Gee, that that answered a lot of the questions on my notes that I had from uh, our audience submissions about like uh, not only you know what's the admission process, what's the kind of uh, admission fees and like scholarships and stuff like that. I think that kind of answered all of those. Well, you know, uh, the fees and scholarships they vary from student to student and w- what their parent is capable of you know giving the school or what kind of information or financial support because they're it, it, we're running into a little bit of difficulty. You know, there's a whole coup going on in the background, but it's a legal matter. There's a oh gosh, this is a coup. Is it between? Is it between the? Who's the coup between? Oh, Just between everybody. us, like I, I won't. Oh gosh! Everyone's gunning for each other's classes. You know, it's it's essentially just like a Game of Thrones, but someone wants to figure out how to teach how to teach all these idiots something. <laughs> it really just depends on <laughs> who's there, teaching what. Is there like qualifications that the teachers need, or how does like somebody become like a? Oh, teacher I didn't hire any tricks? of them. I feel like they've all been here for as long as I have, for as long as the school has. But that, so that, that, like that could of, just, you know, me being jaded. It feels like, you know, faces come and go. Or, just, or, or, hear me out, it's just kind of like some kind of temporal magic where the school sprang into being and the teachers all also sprang into being and nobody questioned it. And they've been around for as long as I, the school's been around. I feel like... The, the reality that we're d- describing at this point is just a horrific, horrific nightmare where a school is conjured without anyone's, you know, approval or, no or, or will or <laughs> opinion. Like no one has willed it into being. It is creating itself with teachers that are all fighting each other and it synthesizes its students. So it's just this big ball of drama that has nothing to do with anything outside of itself. It it do, you know what while researching uh, Strixhaven, it does kind of seem like this uh, self-contained. But that's what high school is. That's what college is. You know. That's very true. If you like go to NKU or if you go to like University of Cincinnati or wherever you go, MIT, it is a very self-contained ecosystem isn't it? yeah and then once you leave it's like you know you're in a whole different reality the adventure that you go on has nothing to do with the education that you just had yeah it's like do you have a degree okay cool check mark mm. and then it's the same thing with magic questions. like oh you can conjure a water elemental that's fantastic here's your cubicle <laughs> that's the perfect that is a perfect metaphor for life <laughs> and for D and D five E magic. I love it. Brutal. Yeah. So yeah, the teachers doesn't. It doesn't even matter what their qualifications are. You know, it does matter though. Are there any school sports? Because school uh, school sports are like you know, in America, that's like 
the bread and butter of half the schools in America. Yeah. I mean, there are countless insane magical school sports. You know, there's ones relating to specifically botany and fighting with the plants that you cultivate. You know, there's elemental battles like fire versus water. I don't really care about those. There are at least like dozens of them. The one that I've been the most interested in is competitive ping pong of players with less than one arm. Oh, yeah. Can they use magic in that? Uh, generally, I mean, it, it varies from player to player. You know, some of them use their feet, some of them use psychics, some of them use their mouths. Um, so it varies, but you know, it's it's my favorite to watch personally. That uh, you know what? If I found a network that had that on, uh, you know, one of my streaming services, I'd tune in. Yeah. I'd tune in at least like you know yearly for like the championships or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's on like a, a competitive college network, but the amount you have to pay just to get that package is ridiculous. So it's not worth it. I just watch it in person. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. Like you know, some networks have like the like the big one, like the big game. I don't think I can say Super Bowl on a podcast because they copyrighted the shit out of that. No, that's but a like, type of salad. Yeah, that's yeah. This you know the one that has a lot of croutons in it. Yeah. Um, but if I could find one that just had like all the championship matches of all the different games, including one arm ping pong, oh, I would tune in. Absolutely, I would buy that. I would buy that too. Do all the different colleges have like different? Again, when I say colleges, it seems kind of weird to me. Do all the different like school houses, I colleges, guess houses is fitting enough. We're just we're ripping off Harry Potter anyway. Here we just got to go with the I mean, lingo. Yeah, might as well just really, really dig into it. Um, do they all have their own kind of like mascots, or is there just a Strixhaven mascot, or how does that work? So the the mascot of Lorehold is actually a, a bag of devouring, consuming a lot uh, like lots of just bunches of pieces of paper. And the problem is that the person who is posing for this painting. They were stuffing a bunch of these things. They thought it was a bag of holding. And just as the painter finished creating this mascot, he reached in and was consumed. So uh, no one really knows the story behind that one except for me. Um, and I'm not going to explain why I, I was actually... You were, you were there. I, I was sitting in the rafters <laughs> eating Cheeto puffs. So that's how that one got made. Yeah, That's the, the lore hold. It's a bag full, full of paper. The uh, prison kids, you know, it's the Nirvana logo, if I'm getting that right. <laughs> It's uh, just oh, 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 I'm I'm forgetting the name of that album. That's really embarrassing. It's not the it's not the baby with no no. Bullet. It's it's okay. the light Thank refraction you. prism. <laughs> That's not okay. Yes mother. yes yes. Thank you. I'm sorry. Thank is that you. even Nirvana? Um, uh, no, that's um. Oh God, Over- Rainbow. Uh, 80s album. <laughs> the dark I'll that all is this house. the dark side of the moon by Pink Floyd. There we go, and we got that in one, by the way. Mm. Yeah, so that that is there. It is the dark side of the moon, uh, the dark, <laughs> the dark side of the moon album cover um, from Pink Floyd. That's the the prison people. The Quantum Club is just an active tesseract. No one knows how they got that onto a two dimensional medium to have the shadow of a, a fourth dimensional object, but they do it nonetheless. It's really disgusting to look at, and if you look at it for too long, your eyes actually start to split into two. You'll never see anything the same way again. Uh, the silver quill, believe it or not, is actually a silver quill. Uh, the wither bloom is just Bulbasaur, and that's it. I like I I I love how the silver quill. They're not the most creative bunch. No, right? they're they're they're, just, they're yeah. all about wallowing in their own self pity. You know the the situation that they believe they found themselves in. So there's no creative expression going outward. It's all inward. So when they ask like you know what, what are you gonna have for your logo, they're like. Pfft. It's done. Yeah, I mean, we're called the Silver Quills. So it's check mark right there on the box. Let's go, go ahead and look. Oh, crack open a dictionary. What does it say a Silver Quill is? It's a quill that's silver. Okay, bam. It's easy for you. Who's in charge of Strix? Is there like a principal? Or superintendent? Um, uh, I, don't, I don't know. Anything All I can say is that there definitely is a school board. I cannot say whether or not they are one person or one person with several minds at the ends of their appendages, all agreeing on the same opinions that don't benefit the school or the school board. Um, oftentimes it contradicts itself, but it does not exist. It is uh, definitely, you know, a principle. It's a normal hierarchy within a normal school. There's nothing strange about it. Um, you know, there's, there's the one at the top of the school 
and then some of the ones below that that person at the top of the school, and then then a couple below them, and then a tr- trickle down, kind of like kind of like a mafia. There's there's the teachers at the bottom that do the groundwork. But it may or may not be just one body. It may well, yeah. That's you could say that about anything, but that is currently <laughs> applicable. While my mind reels from that. Uh, this one is just kind of like a fun question that that's uh, one of our let me see yeah one of our listeners submitted this um, what it what in your opinion Logan mm-hmm. is the best thing on the cafeteria menu oh the cornbread in strict saving the cornbread the cornbread with the chili gotta have it okay what day is that usually served on it's just like one day a week or yeah, it's it's sometimes served on on wednesdays it's usually once a month they call it cornbread wednesdays i don't know who came up with the name there's no alliteration it's not clever at all like taco tuesdays that sounds good we don't Makes have sense. one we don't have one we just have <laughs> cornbread wednesdays but so you've got so, you, so you've got cornbread and wednesdays but they're not every wednesday no it's one wednesday out of the month once. So you gotta guess which Wednesday it is. Yeah, no, they never tell you. It's not actually on any of the boards. The shipment just shows <laughs> you up. You don't know until you line up on the cafeteria on a random Wednesday in the month. You're like, oh shit, it's yeah. I mean, cornbread Wednesday. You know, sometimes I, um, I I fill in for other teachers, and whenever I'm there on a Wednesday, you know, I I just skip my class. You know, two hours early, I'm at that line. I gotta have my cornbread. Sometimes it's not there. Sometimes it's Taco Wednesday. But yeah, you know, that's how it goes. Oh, Taco Wednesday. Yeah, that means that checks out. <laughs> is there, so, is there any kind of like other than which day is going to be the real uh, Cornbread Wednesday? Are there any other kind of like big school secrets, like any kind of like secret, secret dungeons or like a secret, like in, a, in the biblioplex, you pull a secret book and it's like a oh, big secret passageway. Well, like in and out we do have a secret menu for the ca- going back to the cafeteria. Oh, my God. Um, what's, what's your favorite item on the secret menu? Oh, shoot. Probably just the whole onion. The whole? Okay, so, you get, so you walk up. Mm-hmm. You look around. Yeah, no, I can see the cat. You got to make sure the, there's no one the, within like a 15 square foot radius. Y- yeah. And then you, you see the lunch lady slash lunch man and you say, I want a whole onion. Mm-hmm. And then, what what does that look like when they put it on your plate? <laughs> well, kind of looks like. Have you seen you know, like grilled onions? Yeah, like a onion bloom from uh, fucking yeah. uh, Longhorn. Oh, Longhorn Steakhouse. That's right. I I know uh, it from Outback, but I guess that's regional. Outback. Uh, yeah. That's probably the one I've <laughs> okay. named. Well, it's kind of like that, but without any of the breading or the fried oil or any of the cuts. It's just it's like an onion, but if it were whole. <laughs> So, the, so they're gonna slap down an onion on your tray, but they sliced it. No, cool. no, they didn't. No, slice. I'm saying without the slices, this is a whole onion. So they okay. So you ask for a whole onion in a secretive manner, mm-hmm. and only you got to give them a secret like wink, and then they slam down a whole onion. Yeah. So the whole onion on the secret menu and then the quantum tesseract that we have powering the majority of the school. I'd say those are the two main te- main secrets. Okay. Yeah, I mean but may I don't know which one's greater. No, I honestly I couldn't tell you. Uh once you've had a whole onion, uh you know, I'd want to say 97% of people go back, but I'm going to I'm going to start going to buffets and stuff and just asking in a secretive manner, "Hey, Oh yeah! Make sure no one's near you. You got a whole. You got, you got a whole. <laughs> it's the whole. Nobody's onion. within. You know what? And now, in like in like the current timeline, and like where I am in like my state, mm-hmm. generally there's usually no one within 15 feet of me. Anyway. All right, perfect. So yeah, then you can just get a whole. Should be able to get the, away with that by the bushel. It'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, does the Strixhaven ever? So this is something that I've seen kind of in popular media. That we won't mention again. Okay. Understand. The Strixhaven ever offer um, random ass points to a student for like if they're like a really good friend or if they like did really good on like a chess game, they get like college points. Yeah. For their college. Absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of favoritism. Like I said, the kids that aren't 
are brought here naturally, you know, the ones that pay their way, they, they generally get more points. We actually have like a Chuck E. Cheese token system. Um, so instead of, you know, awarding each of the classes, like it, uh, like a pizza party or an ice cream party, we don't do that. And we don't, you know, pin, uh, individual groups against each other. Cause I feel like that's, that just encourages tribalism amongst the students. And that's not something we want to perpetuate. You know, everyone has their own passions. They just fall into five groups. So we give them to individuals. So we have, you know, students who are on top of the class that can tell anyone to do anything. And, uh, you know, they can afford, like, uh, a stick of gum or, like, you know, a few Laffy Taffies for five of these tokens that we give them if they get an answer right or if they do a backflip or something for us. Yeah, backflips, I f- feel, are a really important part and not only, like, Dungeons & Dragons, but Ma- Magic the Gathering and also, like, any kind of magical school. J- just in, yeah, just in a general uh, combat situation. Like, you know, you always have to be on edge and be prepared even when you're surrounded by allies. What's the number one thing that no ally or enemy is expecting you to do? So backflip. backflip. So teachers, they come, they enforce it. They, you know, they'll show up to class, they'll roll a d20, and then they'll point out a student, say, "Hey, do a backflip." If they do it, bam, they get like you know beef jerky or something. Yeah, I'm, I'm like if I can, if I come to you right now, Logan, mm-hmm. and I said, "Hey, backflip," I would do a backflip. Oh damn, that was a good backflip you just did. Oh yeah. shit. Oh man, yeah. See, I can't do backflips, so I'm wait. You know, not... hold on, let me. Bam, backflip. D- two backflips. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. One of them was a bit more yeah, physical. Yeah. See, if there. if I if 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 I was like watching Harry Potter and uh, Severus Snape like went up and he said Harry Potter do a backflip and fucking Harry Potter did a backflip. Back oh my god. I would be like, holy shit, yeah. Award Ravenclaw or uh, Gryffindor, <laughs> rather, you know, who he's actually a part of. Yeah, award Gryffindor fucking 35 uh, imaginary cookie points. Yeah, cookie yeah. points. Give him some, uh, you that's know, a uh, yeah. couple of beef that's jerky a sticks. That's really good taffy. system. Mm. Oh man, those nerd Laffy taffy The nerd slash. ropes are like the main things that, that the school actually gets imported because so many so many students spend their points on those. It's ridiculous. That's the, the best that's the best candy. Mm. And we know it. Do where do the students live? Like is it where is it a situation where it's, you know, like a boarding school where everybody like lives up in in the building or do some kids live off campus and like commute to school or how like how does that work logistically i mean naturally you're going to have some kids that are more adept at teleportation or just have general convenient travel so you know they generally spend their time in uh island areas you know beautiful tropics that aren't that populated but um the, the students that you know aren't able to put themselves wherever we keep them in in very very tight we actually modeled it after a prison camp. You know, they have, they sign a waiver and, um, the beds are generally about, I would say five feet long, you know, the cushions. We actually found that if you order, uh, just basic hay cushions and then you cut them in half, the students complain only about 20, maybe 30% on a bad year more than if they just had the normal bunks. So we just go with that. Yeah. So generally they're kept in, you know, nice, tight kind of funnel areas that we just kind of put in a ring around the school and then when you know when school starts they just they kind of collide into the school and students file out so the average uh, bed length is five feet what's the average student height if do you have that number off the top of your head uh yeah so recently i learned that loxodons actually attend the school and um, oh cool yeah they range from uh i believe seven to eight feet tall uh, you know, th- that's that's the minority of the school for sure. And, you know, when it's outside of the budget, who the fuck cares? That's just how that's how capitalism. That's how I'm sorry. Education works. So we definitely keep them within fives. You know, the halflings, the gnomes, we don't get complaints from them. The the, the <laughs> owlings. It, it averages out, right? Oh, I absolutely. Mean, yeah. Between the <laughs> Between the halflings being absolutely just stoked about their batting situation, <laughs> the Luxodon, um, not super pumped about it. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, you got to take the mean, right? Yeah, uh, no, it's it's all about the investment percentage at the end of the day. Because it's we're about education. Yeah, and 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 profits. Uh, 
I mean, you got to be able to at least make the profit to keep the school running, right? I mean, it's like, it's kind of like yeah, a... Yeah, I, we're, we're technically a nonprofit organization, so everything definitely goes into the school, not into anybody's pockets or flying Mercedes or, you know, teleportation rings or anything. Yeah, I mean, people, like, even, you know, the, the founders of schools and stuff, I mean, they need ways of getting around to the schools, right? Even if it yeah. is, you know, a little bit... You know, we had we had one uh, teacher actually who was denied a lobster dinner um, on on a Wednesday. Ironically, oh. you know, he rampaged what? and destroyed he destroyed the entire sixth um, college. So we kind of get them get them everything that they want, and um, we we avoid you know mishaps like that. So it it's all it all goes back to the school, like I said. We don't want to get down to four schools because no. then we're going in that TMTM. Um, mm-hmm. Hagsmore. Yes. Actually, when you fall into four or less schools, you have to get a sorting hat, and that's just problematic. Does Strixhaven have that kind of weird school tradition where, like, when somebody graduates, you're like, hey, I love that. I love what you're doing out there with your education. We could, we, we would love, you know, they're hitting up their alums like we would love like just a little bit more money. Oh yeah, no, we absolutely don't create adventurers. We don't create individual personalities. We, we create cogs, you know, um, magicians who serve uh, a singular purpose. So when we let them out of the quote unquote school, we, <laughs> let we, them out. yeah, you know, there's, there's five different, uh, whatever you want to call them, different groups. And, uh, when we send them out, we have five different investor groups. And these investor groups have defined purposes for these people. And there's a lot of really abstract situations, you know, where they kind of file in once they leave the school. So technically, they never graduate. They just get a ceremony. Okay. It's it's a lovely place. You know, I encourage a lot of anyone who's wealthy to apply. And then... What kind of, you know, just percentage or, like baseline in money uh are we expecting from these uh from these uh alums slash continuing it's it's definitely a case by case basis this is obviously not something we want to open to the public yeah what i will i will be, yeah I, yeah i'll keep this out of the the actual podcast. I, this is just me. Oh, okay. So then, then definitely at least a small town with one to two hamlets. Uh, we want the, the, that to be our property as an entry fee for one or two students. It, it, it's case by case, like I said. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that seems like a pretty good baseline. It seems like that's going to keep the the books greased. Yeah. <laughs> no, books. absolutely. I mean, I, I'll, I'll add it all. I mean, how, how do you? How do not grease any books. How do you think we get our cornbread? I mean, cornbread in D and D, it's probably pretty expensive. It's got corn. It's got bread. It's got bread. Both are very hard to come by. <laughs> Both corn and bread are very hard to come by. Uh, hey, hey, Logan. Before we end, usually, usually our topics are about like some kind of like monster or something. <laughs> okay. We, yeah, we we end with like giving like the number one like greatest tip about fighting that monster. No. This time, since you know we're talking about uh, Strixhaven, what would be your number one biggest piece of advice for somebody who wants to get into Strixhaven? Like, what would be your, you know, your number one tip for like, hey, if you really want to get in, do this. Um, you know, I would I wouldn't go as far as to say buy the book or the PDF. I feel like that's you know too complicated, way too expensive these days. I would have to say just storm the gates and tell them that you'll start scrubbing the floors. Eventually, yeah, no, a lot of the times they actually have really, really terrible janitorial staff and they wear the same uniforms as the students. So given one or two weeks, they'll think that they fired you, bam, you're a student. And not to mention, in this economy, everyone's hiring. Everyone's trying to get, you know, those frontline workers. Those and sweet, like that. sweet I mean, Strixhaven graduates. That's what it's all yeah, about. You just gotta, you, you gotta, you gotta really put in the work, and then, uh, like you said, you know, one to two weeks later, just act like it's like spy, it's like Superman, mm-hmm. but if Superman ripped off a suit of Superman, and underneath was a suit of Superman, and you're like, yeah, I'm a student now. Yeah, or like a lobster, I just keep shedding its skin. And it's the same thing. <laughs> or like you just gotta be like a lobster, everybody. Yeah. And that's how you get into strict saving. You be a lobster. Be a lobster. 
Lobsters get into Strixhaven. Hey, Logan, a.k.a. Runesmith, thank you so much, genuinely, for being on Lauren Poor. Thank you so much. Uh, where can people find you when you're not studying Strixhaven and collecting dues on Strixhaven? Yeah, my, my beautiful dividends. Man, that was difficult to keep a straight face <laughs> through a lot of that. Um, you know, I currently, I, I try to stay as active as mentality allows. You know, it's been a, a stressful couple of years, but I spent a lot of time on my channel, RuneSmith. And then, um, you know, you can find my published works. I do fifth edition, um, uh, what's the word? Supplements. I actually just finished my third one and we're going through the waves of editing right now. And that'll actually show up on Kickstarter in less than a month or that's probably not true in a little over a month, I want to say. So that'll be my third one. Again, you can find all that on Eldermancy or Ghostfire Gaming. They're the main hosts. Uh, yeah, that's, that's my core. What's your... What's your um, your next supplement you're putting out? What's it called? It's called Sunken Isles, and it is a level 1 to 20 adventure that is meant to take place over the course of 20 sessions, with the players leveling up every session. So it, it is this massive 20-week race across a bunch of islands to try and save the world from its own creator. So hopefully that'll be fun. I've I've seen... Uh, talks of this adventure, and I huh. don't know exactly where. Like, it, it seems like I've been seeing like people outside of you, Logan, talking about this adventure, like hyped up about it, um, on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Interesting. I, I know that they're starting to pump out kind of the early promotions, uh, but that was only this this these last couple of days. But regardless, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it'll be really cool adventure hopefully people enjoy it yeah that sounds that sounds amazing to me and the kickstarter goes live do you know the uh the live date yet or i want to say it's going to be close to what we usually do so uh late or mid february and running through march it'll definitely be somewhere in march amazing i i can't wait to i will definitely be one of the backers because i love systems like that i love campaigns like that uh, just being the DM of like one shot onslaught, I like um, kind of fast paced campaigns. Right, you level up one per session. Sounds amazing. Uh, that that that's kind of my speed of of uh, tabletop RPGs. Yeah, hopefully it works out. Make sure that you tune in and uh, support this new Kickstarter because I definitely will, and we will probably be running it either in a home game or on a stream or a podcast or something. So check it out. Uh, Logan, thank you so much. Like I mentioned, uh, make sure you check out the uh, Logan's uh, RuneSmith's um, YouTube channel, which is the basically, what I call it, is the basically uh, lore channel. And if if you've listened to Lauren Poor before, that's pretty much like the like one of the only channels. There's like two or three channels I, I use to um, study uh, topics before we record and every single time I will search for basically <laughs> Lauren poor topic and uh, that's where I get all my information from so <laughs> uh, so yeah thank you so much Logan for being on and yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. Uh, check out that uh, that Kickstarter and we'll see you all in two weeks bye everybody peace